In this lesson, you'll learn the skills, techniques and procedures to follow, which I guarantee will improve your score in the OAT Reading Part A. And welcome to OET with Alex. In today's lesson, we're focusing on part A of the reading paper in the OET exam. We're going to look at the skills you have to master and a procedure to follow to maximize your score in this part A of the reading. These methods are all tried and tested, so make sure you watch until the end so that you can maximize your score. Before we dive in, if any of you are interested in an online preparation course, I run a program for Atlantic Language, which takes two weeks. We run it every month. It's a really good course to get you ready just before you take the exam. All of the details are in the description of this video. OK, so let's talk about some facts about part A of the reading paper, the reading exam. So first of all, there are four texts. All of these texts are related to a single issue or a single topic in healthcare. There are 20 questions and you have 15 minutes to do that. So that means you have 45 seconds per question. It's not a lot of time. So everything we're focusing on today in the lesson is to find ways for you to answer these questions as quickly and as efficiently as possible, considering you only have this period of time. And remember part A, is a separate part so you only have 15 minutes you can't steal time from parts b and c in the reading because you have to finish that in the 15 minutes allocated so what does it test reading part a well information from oet says part a assesses your ability to locate specific information from the text in a quick and efficient manner so the key thing here is specific information all of the questions in this part are really testing the same thing. You have to find the exact part of the text that gives you the answer with paraphrases in the, in the questions usually, and that's how you find the correct answer. So we're going to go into more detail of the procedure for this, and also we're going to look at a sample which you can download from OET's website as well. Okay, and also, we need to think about the different question types. There are three different question types in part A of the reading paper, and we're going to look at each of them today. The first one is matching, so it's matching a statement to a text that you have, A, B, C, or D. You have sentence completion, and you have short answers as well. So in the example that we look at in the lesson today, then we'll look at each type of those. The procedure is more or less the same for answering the questions but obviously the matching ones are a little bit easier because you just have to match with the text rather than find the specific part or the specific phrase or expression in the text for the answer. Okay so let's talk about the procedure and the skills that we need to use to get these correct answers as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Okay so I'm going to put the procedure up here and we'll talk about what the skills mean. So the first stage of this procedure is to read, to skim read all of the text as quickly as possible. Now I'd really recommend you try to do that in about two minutes but you know it's a different uh, speed for different people but you really have to look at it as, as quickly as possible and the key thing here is look at the text first before the questions because if you look at the questions first they, they don't have any context. So first of all, we're going to skim read all the text as quickly as we possibly can. You're just trying to get a, a general idea of what the, the topic is for all of them together and the differences, the different focuses between the four texts, A, B, C and D. The second part of the procedure is to read the questions and identify key words. The key words here, I mean the things which give the message of the question or the task and the things which are likely to be paraphrased in the text. 
quite often you can find a very exact paraphrase, you know, something that means the same thing, and that is key to finding the answer. We'll look at this once I get the, the sample up on the screen, so that will make more sense then. In part three of the procedure, we're going to go through the questions one by one. We've already skimmed the full text, so we've got an idea of what it's about and the differences between the four texts. Then we're going to focus on the keywords and make a guess at this stage what text it might be in. So if we're matching, that's all we need to know is say which text it's in. But if we're trying to find the information to answer a short question or a completion question, then we need a little bit more than that. So after that, once we've got an idea, we can scan through, which means to you know look very quickly to try to find one part of something, scan through the text to try to establish which text it is, okay? And if at that point we, we realize what it is, we can look back at the keywords and compare with the parts of the text which we think gives us the answer, okay? So if we're just matching, that's enough at this, this stage. But if we need to find a part of the text, then we have to read in a little bit more detail. Okay, then we repeat this for all questions and that's our procedure. So let's try to put this into practice and I'll get the sample paper up on the screen so we can have a look at it together. Please remember to like this video if you feel like you're getting benefit from it and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of our future lessons as well. Okay, so I'm going to put the sample reading paper up on the screen just now. If you want to download it, the link is in the description, but it's sample test two from OET's website. You can get it there. There are two documents we're going to look at here. One has the text and one has the question, okay? So if you want to pause this video just now and get them open, it would be useful because you can do it at the same time and at different times I'll tell you to pause as well. Okay, so let's get started looking at this sample test. Like I said before, if you want to do this along with me then and follow the, pr the procedure which I suggested, then just pause it at the relevant times. So the first part of our procedure was to skim read the text as quickly as we can. We're trying to establish a general idea of what it's about and also what the different texts, what they focus on as well. Okay, so if you want to pause now and do that, go ahead. But obviously I'm going to go keep on talking. So, you know, the headings help us a lot when we're doing this. We can see here with the text, so paracetamol overdose, we already, just from the first two words, start to have an idea about what this is about. Then we've got text A, the headings give us, you know, about contraindications and interactions. So we already start to figure something out about this. We can skim read through all of this. Here we see, you know, we don't need to read all this in detail. We can see it's a flow chart. It's telling us something about procedure. We can see here as well in text C, uh, important thing, it's about emergency treatment of poisoning. You can have a quick look through that and try to establish what this graph here is showing as well across the sides. And then text D, we can see it includes information about clinical assessment and history. So you should be able to look through all of these really quickly just to get, just to establish what the four texts are about, what's the theme. So we already know it's paracetamol overdose and basically the differences between each text. And then after we've done that, we can go to stage two, which is to start looking at the questions. So let's go ahead and do that, okay? Here are the questions here. Again, feel free to download these from OET's website and we can look at it together, okay? So here we have our 20 questions. Uh, we're going to focus on three of them at a time and then I'm going to give you a chance to practice some of these procedures as part of the lesson as well. So questions one to seven, we can see it's a matching exercise. We just have to say A, B, C, or D for each one. Questions eight to 13, we have short answers. And then questions 14 to 20, we have sentence completion. So we have each type of question that you can get in this part A of the reading. 
So let's follow our procedure. We're going to look at questions one, two, and three uh, of part A of this reading. Okay, so as I said, very quickly, you have to establish what are the key words in each question. So by the key words, I mean what gives you the message that they're trying to communicate, they're trying to convey, convey in this question, and what words are likely to be paraphrased. So have a look at the first one, just number one for now, and have a think what could be the key words here. So I think the various symptoms of patients who have taken too much paracetamol. So, I mean, first of all, too much could be important, but we know all of the texts are about overdose of paracetamol. So that's, you know, that, that's, that's a given actually. Uh, but actually, this is what we're looking for here. That is what it's asking us to find out the symptoms of patients who have taken too much paracetamol. So normally I would suggest doing this for each one of these if you're doing it in the exam, but in this case we're going to do it, so I mean do all one to seven together and then go and find the answers because this is a lesson we're going to do one, find the answer and come back. So I would say underline in a normal exam, in a normal situation, then underline all of the keywords in one to seven and then focus on one by one, but we'll do it a little bit different for this. So we've decided that the keyword here is symptoms and all we have to do is decide on the text. So if we go back to our texts and just have a look at the general information here. So this one, interactions, procedure, anything here that part, emergency treatment. So, you know, we're still not looking at anything that is really related to symptoms or something which could be clinically assessed. So I think just the, the heading from D gives us a clue that that could be the correct answer. But then we have to, like I said, for scan this. So we look through everything in D here, We've got an idea this is the correct answer, but let's establish for sure this is the correct answer. Okay, so we're looking for something related to symptoms. And we can see here, patients may also develop, and then we have a list of the symptoms. So we can go back to our answers fairly confidently and say there the answer is D. I'm not going to write the answer for each one of them. I'll just say it because it doesn't look very nice. Uh, but yeah, so very quickly, just from having a, a, a scan of the text, sorry, a skim of the, the text to uh, figure out what it's about in general, we've come to question one, picked our keyword. We've already got an idea about what, it's, what, it, what text it could be in. We scanned that text and then we found the exact part that tells us the answer. So it's a very efficient way of answering this question. So let's try it again for question two. So we've got some different things, the precise levels. So that's, you know, we're starting to think about numbers and, and things like that, you know, with how that could be displayed, uh, precise levels of paracetamol in the blood which require urgent intervention. So, you know, this looks like it could be important to me, but also levels. I would say these are the two things that we need to look for in the text, the precise levels of paracetamol in the blood which require urgent intervention. So again, we look, go back to our text we look through them, which of these is going to be about urgent intervention and which of these is going to talk about precise levels. Just scanning through this, we can see there's no mention of levels here. There's a little bit mention of levels here, but it's not related to anything urgent. And then here we see we are talking about levels and we've got concentrations of different things. And the key thing here is that we're talking about emergency treatment. So if we're talking about emergency treatment, going back to our question, urgent intervention. So we can see that's quite a clear paraphrase. Paraphrase meaning a different way of saying something. So we can see quite clearly here, the answer is C to that one. I'll try to write a C with this pen. It's not very easy, but there you can see it. Okay, so let's try this again with number three. 
So we've got the steps to be taken when treating a paracetamol overdose patient. So, you know, first of all, this word here is really screaming out, this is an important word, the steps, because everything else is really, a, it could be a, a lot of the, the different, uh, the different text because it's all about paracetamol overdose. So if we go back to our text, we've got text A, doesn't really look like it's talking about steps there. Text B, yes, different, definitely this is talking about the different steps that we need to take here. So, you know, this is, there's not a specific thing here that's telling us, but just from looking at the full diagram here, it talks about the steps, you know, the different things that you have to do and answer the questions to look at the next step. So we can see here clearly the answer to this one is B. Okay, so you can see even doing this together and talking through it, it's quite quick doing this this way, especially when we establish, you know, what the texts are about and what the key words giving the key message in the questions are. Okay, so I'm not going to talk you through four, five, six, and seven. I want you to do that on your own to practice this system. And then you can let me know in the comments how you get on with that. And we're going to go on now and look at questions eight, nine, and 10. Okay, so we have short answers here for questions eight to, uh, to eight to 13. We're going to look at eight, nine, and 10 together, and then you'll have a chance to practice for the other questions on your own. And you can check the answers up with on, on the OET page. You can check the link in the description to get, like I said, you know, the text, the questions, and also the answers are there as well. Uh, okay, so, Basically, the procedure is the same, but in this case, you know, we have to get a word or short phrase from the text. So that complicates it a little bit more. It means we have to find, you know, an exact part of the text in questions one to seven. We were just finding the text itself. Uh, and remember, it could include words, numbers, or both. Always important to read the instructions. So, Again, let's do it question by question, decide what is the key information that we're looking for. Decide on the text, and then we're going to scan that text to find the exact part where the question is. And that's when we actually have to read in a little bit more detail because you're going to have to select the word or phrase from the text and put it in there, okay? So in question eight, Paracetamol, okay, we know that's everything's about is use a long-term painkiller, what symptom may get worse? So I think long-term is, long-term painkillers is important. Obviously here there's more information, so there may be more keywords that you need to look for here and symptom worse. So, you know, those are really the key things that we need to think about here. So what we already know the text, what they're about a little bit. So let's go back, try to establish which text they may be about. Okay, so you can scan through this. Obviously I'm doing this very quickly just now, but you do it in a bit more detail, but basically we're looking for something about long-term and very quickly, you know, we see this. So long-term, and this matches exactly, it's not a paraphrase, it matches exactly what it says in the question. So that is a trigger for us. We know that there's potential for the answer to be right here. So we're looking for a symptom that may get worse. That's now what we're looking for, paraphrasing to give us the answer. So let's administration every two days or more frequently, headache may develop or increase. So increase, that's a paraphrase. That's a clear paraphrase for get worse. What symptom are they talking about? Headache. So there we have the answer right there. So again, identifying the keywords in the question, scanning to find the right part of the text, and then reading in a little bit more detail gives us our correct, correct answer. In this case, headache. And that's all you need to put to correct the correct answer, headache. He I think they would accept headaches as well. Okay, and number nine, let's look at this. It may be dangerous to administer paracetamol to a patient with which viral condition. So we know we're looking for a viral condition and we know 
it could be dangerous. Okay, so if we start thinking about which part this, so we know text A is about contraindications and interactions. So, you know, this, we're starting to think about connections here. So this is a good bet that it's going to be in text A as well. So we want to find something that could be dangerous and we want something which is a viral condition. So if we start scanning through looking for any of this, so a contraindication is obviously that's something which could be dangerous and virus is mentioned here. So if we read, we know we need to focus on this sentence now. Other contraindications are shock and acute inflammation of liver due to hepatitis C. So there we have our answer right there. Hepatitis C. So look back at the question, maybe dangerous to administer paracetamol to a patient with which viral condition? Hepatitis C. Hep C. They'll accept that as an answer as well. Again, you know, you see how quickly you can actually find these answers with this system. Okay. And number 10, what condition may develop in an overdose patient who presents with jaundice? Okay, so we know we're looking for jaundice somewhere here. That's going to be important. And the question is what condition? Okay, so we know that the patient is presenting themselves. So we're starting to think, you know, that's not really talking. It's not going to be in there. It's not talking about procedures. There's nothing there about that. There's not going to be anything there about emergency treatment for that, but clinical assessment, obviously we're talking about patients presenting with this. So, you know, this is the case here uh, that is going to be involved in clinical assessment. So we can look at this in a little bit more detail. And we're looking for something about jaundice. There we go, we've got it there. And looking back at the question, we see we're looking for a condition in this case begins to develop after 24 hours and progress and can progress to acute liver failure so in this case that's the answer yeah because it may develop looking back develop it's the same word it's not even paraphrased and because we're talking about John this there that's the key that shows us the correct part to find the answer and the correct answer is acute liver failure. So you can have a look at questions 11, 12 and 13 and try to do them yourself. Pick the keywords, find the correct text, home in on the exact part of the text and then try to read that in more detail and that will give you the answer. And now we're going to move on and look at questions 14, 15 and 16. So together we'll have covered about half of the paper and then you'll have a chance to practice half of this. So half of part A of the paper and then you'll have a, a chance to practice these things by yourself as well. Okay, so let's focus now on questions 14, 15 and 16. And this type of question is sentence completion. It's not very different to the questions, to the, the procedure or the type of question that we looked at with the short answer, but we just have to make sure it fits into the sentence grammatically and it makes sense and all of those kind of things as well. But our procedure is exactly the same. So we're trying to get key words. So immediately we can see here in 14, the patient has taken metro clopramide, excuse my pronunciation of any medical terms, uh, alongside paracetamol, this may affect the something of the paracetamol. So we, we know we're looking for this. So you know, already, without even going back to the text, we're thinking interactions, yeah, because that's where it's going to be. So which text was that? It was text A. So we know we need to go to text A already without even looking at the text and that something that this may affect of the paracetamol. Okay, so let's go back to text A. Here is metroclopramide and it may increase speed of absorption. 
of paracetamol. So there we've got the answer right there. How quick was that to find it? No problem at all, just because we could focus on that. And then we see, make sure it fits. This may affect the speed of absorption of the paracetamol. Perfect. So easy. Okay, and for number 15, let's look and see what the key information is. After 24 hours, an overdose patient may present with pain in the something. You know, we can with these ones, you can already start to predict what the, the answer might be. So it's pain somewhere, pain in what? Uh, and it's after 24 hours and present with pain. So we're already thinking about presenting, which, you know, was a key before. And which text was that? It was text D. So if we look back at text D here, you can see in this case, I'm talking about after 24 hours. Okay, so that's for the first 24 hours, but here this sentence here is talking about after 24 hours and we're looking for pain in the something. So what could it be? Right upper quadrant pain. So we've got pain there. Again, it's not even paraphrased. It's just there. The right answer is pain in the right upper quadrant. Again, so easy. And question 16, let's have a look at that. For the first 24 hours after overdosing, patients may only have symptoms such as. So we're talking about the first 24 hours. We already saw in text D, it was talking about first 24 hours and after 24 hours. So we can go straight back there, see if we can find the answer to this. So we, again, we're talking about the first 24 hours. What was our key thing again there? For the first 24 hours after overdosing, patients may only have symptoms such as, so we're looking for symptoms here. Again, back to the text. And right there we have nausea and vomiting. So that is the answer to number 16. So you can see here how quickly and efficiently you can do this part of the OET reading with these methods. Go on, have a look at questions 17 to 20, check your answers, download all of these things from OET's website. They're all, they're all official sample tests, so it's great practice for you. Keep on practicing, practicing this, there are three on the website you can download and try. And this system, once you practice it and once you get really quick at it, it's going to make sure you get the, the correct answers time and time again, and you get the score that you want. Okay, so as you can see from this procedure and you know all these tips that I'm giving you today, the key thing really is to maximize your time. You don't have a lot of time to read all of these texts. And in fact, you don't need to know everything about all these texts. All you need to do is find the information that the question is asking you for. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. I hope you find the procedure useful. A really important thing here is to practice it. So take another sample test from OET's website and try this and see if it improves the type of scores that you're getting already. As I've already said, please subscribe to the channel. Please like this video, it makes a big difference to me. Also, I have another channel, Learn English with Alex. Please check that out as well if you feel like you need to improve your general English a little bit as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again.